Mother's Day 2017. I uh, literally just put these uh, St. Louis style, I cut them myself, uh, ribs, uh, my firebox. I got up going good with some charcoal. Um, I only use my stack to start it. I don't use charcoal lighter fluid, even though that usually don't matter. Um, you can see I have uh, three big chunks of applewood in there and probably about my half bag of charcoal. Um, so, and then, uh, I have the ribs right here. I have them all seasoned up with uh, typical things um, and some stuff that I, I use uh, for myself. Now, usually you see a lot of people take this silver skin off of these ribs here. Uh, the stuff that I put on them, uh, just the mixtures of stuff will literally break them down like it's not even there. Um, and it'll actually hold them apart because the way I cook these ribs, when I'm actually done, they, um, you try to take them off the grill and they'll literally, uh, they'll fall apart and shred on you. So um, I like to keep that on there because it helps keep them together. Um, you can see I got some mods going on inside here. It's a little, little dirty. I did a lot of smoke in the last two weeks. Um, the great snap with the stuff below it. Uh, so yeah, I definitely, that's the smoke, Oklahoma Joe's, um, uh, smoker. So, um, we're going to see what's going to happen. I'm going to try doing, people say to do a three, two, one method. Uh, usually I'll run and do, um, like a two, um, two, one. It's usually more than enough, but, uh, three, two, one, if you're doing like four, four ribs would be great but seeing how i have i don't have none of the remnants it's just strictly you know st louis style i already got the tops the tips cut um so this is a really small stacks of meat the apple was going to penetrate into that really nice uh, and if you guys want any tips or anything about these mods i have the clamps um i have the fire the fire seal along the whole thing uh, these clamps that I have attached with high temp uh, Permatex. So I have that on each side. Uh, I have a seal around the fire box, which has to be a different type. Um, aftermarket, uh, you know, temperature gauges, which these temperature gauges um, are not the best, as you can see. They actually can pivot. These are tightened all the way down. They actually pivot. Uh, so the only way I could get these adjusted properly is when it was 100 degrees outside, I had to stick it dead on 100 degrees from the sun. That's how I was able to actually pivot these properly. Um, I would not recommend this brand at all. Uh, and then I have the three, I think it's a three and a half inch elbow that's supposed to be for a dryer or a duct work of some kind. I have that so it goes down almost to the grate. There's still a little gap in there. Uh, in order to allow the smoke to fill up the uh, chamber um, versus just going, you know, coming in through here, going across and just dumping straight out the side up the pipe. So it'll actually bring it over and then, uh, you know, it'll, it'll kind of resonate before it actually will go out. And then I took a, I know it's kind of ghetto, but I took a side to an old HP computer box and I cut it to what I needed. I don't know if you can really see that, but uh, it goes you know, down here and I have it cut out and it comes back up and over and it's on like a, I don't know, 30 degree angle and it's coming from the top of the firebox there and it runs down uh, to the bottom of the grates and what that's doing is it's allowing the heat to slowly spread out um, and then I just have a pan in there for some water just to introduce a little moisture. Uh, then I use this guy here. Uh, it's Thermal Pro, Therm Pro. Um, it's okay, it's not bad. And then I have a receiver on the inside of the house so I can watch it from inside the house when it's, uh, the weather is not, not great outside. Um, so I hang that right here and that will, I have a probe sitting there again. Um, and that probe will let me know exactly what the temperature is of the smoke as it exits. Um, and then I have, you know, the secondary probe going into the meat where I want it to let me know when the meat hits what I want. So when this hits about two hours and 45 minutes or so, maybe two hours and 50 minutes. Uh, and then um, I'm going to run and or, or if the meat hits like 160 ish degrees, I'll come out and throw foil on it. Um, I don't always do that, but then I'll come out and do, throw some foil on it for about an hour and 45, two hours, maybe. 
uh, until the meat hits right around 180 degrees, which is more than enough. And then when I pull that off, uh, the tin foil off, the meat will have uh, receded um, off of the bone. I mean, off the, off the tips here. It, you'll, you'll see how it's pulled back um, on my uh, next clip. These but... down. This actually stops a lot of smoke from escaping out of the side once you lock it down. Uh, same thing, you know, I have it on both sides. Um, the thing you want to do, like on the smoke, you want your smoke, you want to barely be able to see it. Um, I'm actually getting a good shot because it's kind of dark out right now uh, with the sun. But you want it to be like a light blue hue where it's almost invisible. Um, if you get like super, super white, like, here I'll... Like if it's, if it's super white, then you're probably starving off, uh, you know, you don't have enough air to get into your firebox to feed. So it's going to be choking out. Um, but even this, this is because it wasn't started too, too long ago, but you can see how you can see almost through it. Like it's transparent, you know, you can see straight through. So, uh, you just want it just a light bit of smoke. Um, just a little bit. So you can kind of see how, how, to me, it looks blue. I call it like a blue smoke. Uh, that's, that's what I try to keep it at. So, um, We'll see where, where it's at when we come back. This is how your smoke should look. Try to get a better shot on that. All right. I mean, you can barely see it. See that? Um, now that I have the other side adjusted right. And it takes a minute, especially when you're use, using a wood uh, smoker like me. It's not like you can set it and forget it like these electric smokers. Not that there's anything wrong with them. Uh, I just, I like having control of all the elements. Because I can have my high heat here. Um, you know, obviously that's the firebox that's heating it. It's coming over here and being exchanged into the actual smoker. And then, uh, it's still tell me what my, my temperature is, where the fire is, the, the initial heat's bleeding over into the box. And then it'll give me where it is coming across here to the smoke temp. And in case there's any doubts and there is something skewed about that, uh, then I have my digital right here that will relay to me remotely, uh, exactly what's going on. That way I know the, where the smoke temperature is inside of there. Um, and it may be overkill, but it's something I really, really enjoy. So, like again, uh, this is exactly what you want on a smoker. If it's more than this, you could have bitter meat. Um, and you could have a lot of wasted meat. Uh, there's nothing worse than uh, a lot of people expecting <laughs> good smoked food. And then um, you having to break the news or make excuses on why it doesn't taste well. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so this is what you're looking for. Again, this is what I consider to be called blue smoke. Because, to me, that's kind of what it looks like. It's a dark gray uh, there's no sooty nasty mess so you'll find the perfect ratio once you get the once you get the charcoal or wood started and you get it burning to the right uh, consistency then you adjust that airflow um, if, you know after you close the top of the firebox you have to adjust the airflow and um, that would be done on most things by doing uh, you could do this this door this this door just doesn't allow enough air in uh, so I use that in conjunction with actually opening the door and i found the right ratio to uh to get the that almost invisible blue smoke that um that i go after so um so yeah so we'll see you in a bit and get you an update so if you're ever trying to make perfect smoke things yeah especially your proteins um this 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 color smoke is the ticket right here right there so that's it and uh, again, if you guys need any information or want to know uh, about any mods uh, that I've done to the smoker um, or uh, what brands that I've used or I've used other things too that have failed. So if you guys even have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I will answer them. So I think two hours and 40 minutes or so. I'll go ahead and see how she's doing. All right, so this is where we're at so far. You can see how the meat is recessed off the bone. And here as well. So, yeah, it's, uh, now it's time for me to get them wrapped up and get maybe just a little more heat on them. Yes, yeah, so they're not quite. I'll have to roll them too. So this is where we're at so far. So I'll show you guys. I'm gonna try to do this. 
with my phone propped up. But now I got a tin foil them since it's been about two hours and 45 minutes. So I'm gonna take these off. Try to keep as much juice as you can. In this cup side, I'm gonna try keeping it up. So the juices can stay on top of it. So that's one. And this is going to require because I don't, I got the cheap tin foil, so it's not really big enough to go around everything. So, that's how we do that. Throw it back over again. I keep the cup side facing up. I'm gonna throw these back on here. Now since I already marinated these and I soaked them in a mixture of butter and um, other miscellaneous spices, uh, apple cider, apple juice, and apple cider vinegar, and I'll occasionally spray these, um, they've, they've absorbed a lot. So uh, what I'm going to do is the only thing that I'm I, I'm gonna do is wrap these up. They're 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 very I mean they're the juice is very plentiful. Uh, I'm gonna keep it nice and juicy just like that. And wrap it up. With net and let the natural juices work. I know you see some people load them up with butter. Uh, brown sugar is another method. There's nothing wrong with that. I just, uh, I do that sometimes. I just want to do a nice natural flavor. And I, I don't want to drown out the flavor of my smoke. And yet, you know, even as of an hour ago, the ribs were technically done. Uh, again, I'm, I'm smoking them. Now, I'm not going to add any type of smoke or anything like that to this after they're wrapped because it's absolutely pointless. It cannot penetrate the metal. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I would be wasting wood at that point. Um, so I'm pretty much done. This is all going to be offset heat from this point. Um, I'm going to have no more. Uh, there's going to be no more wood applied to this after I finish these guys up. Um, you're going to see uh, them when I unwrap them. They're going to be extremely juicy. There's going to be juice, juice dripping out of these things. Um, it's very important that they have rest time after they're done cooking. Uh, so... I'm going to go ahead and add a little more charcoal to my box. This is where I'm at right now. So I'm going to clean out some of the coals. I do that by shaking the lower rack a little bit and scraping it out with a long old spatula that I don't use, which is right here. And uh, that way the air flow doesn't get blocked from underneath it. I'm going to add a few more bricks on top of there with all of this still left open uh, because we don't want that nasty, I don't want the nasty soot coming over into my cook, my food chamber. 
So I'll leave everything wide open just like this. Throw it back in there. It'll take about five minutes, maybe six minutes with the temperature inside here. I think it's close to 600 degrees in here. It won't take long at all to get the uh, the new charcoal going and white. And then I'll be able to let that continue to warm up until um, until it gets uh, until it stops giving off smoke. And then I'll be able to close the box down, close this up for another hour and 45 minutes or so. And then you'll see the finished product uh, or close to finished product. So uh, we'll see you guys at that point. Um, my probe right here. And I don't know if you've seen how I did the probe so the juices don't leak. They'll still leak a little bit, but not as bad. I wrap it. Um, I wrap it with one piece of foil coming run one way, another piece of foil coming the other way. Sometimes I'll wrap around the shaft of it first. Uh, and then do the same thing and usually it doesn't leak um, you'll notice i stopped putting water in my water pan um, again it's not going to serve any purpose uh, on wrap ribs so um, i've cleaned out the remnant ashes from my firebox and i have added fresh charcoal on top of there probably about i don't know uh, 25 to 30 bricks or so and it will not take long at all for these to stop smoking. You can see the smoke that's coming out. When I'm using just charcoal, I want no smoke, none. So I will let this keep going. Um, it's gonna, not even going to be five minutes. And it's already turning white. It hasn't even been in there for 45 seconds. And I will. Uh, it should be able to um, close this down and let this to finish cooking. Um, I'll shoot for a more higher heat when I'm doing this uh, because I'm trying to get these the rib temperatures now. I want my thermometer at least saying 180 to 185 degrees uh, for one reason. I don't, uh, I'm not trying to overcook them, but uh, since they're wrapped in foil now, I'm trying to get them to uh, release the juices, um, which will reabsorb into them as I let them set later. But I want them to uh, basically when you do that, and then it, and then it'll it'll just they're gonna fall off the bone when I take these when I take the foil off of these you're going to see if I wanted to twist one of the bones off uh, it would twist off and, and you guys I'm sure you already know this if you're watching this video you're already uh, have been working on you know with smokers and barbecues on I'm sure uh, but uh, th this is just uh, this is what they call the three two one method it just it never really takes it's a good rule of thumb but it, for me it's like two and a half hours the first time uh, hour and a half maybe the second time and then maybe 30 to 40 minutes uh, on the third one so it's not really a three two one um i guess it's a good i don't know guide uh if you will but um to me this just works out better i'm it, it, i started off doing the full three the full two then the full full one and it just seemed uh i it, i don't know it, it didn't seem to make a difference whatsoever um the meat wasn't any more tender it didn't taste any more different it, it was just uh it, was just, it was just seemed like it was wasted heat and then you have to add more charcoal for uh you know when i do like a half bag of charcoal it'll it'll get me like two hours and 30 to two hours and 45 minutes before it starts falling under uh 220 degrees so to me i'm not i wouldn't want to have to leave this open you know and and then heat more charcoal up uh, and wait for the smoke to go down and then close everything back up just for to put it back in there for another 25 minutes um, or whatever uh, to me it's just a waste of charcoal and, and it's even more of a waste of time so uh, well that's the method of my madness I don't know you, you'll find your own shortcuts or um, and whatever you find more beneficial so as you go but yeah so um, I'm going to be locking this back down and I will see you guys when it's time to get these wraps off. So here we are. I don't know. Uh, about an hour and 40 minutes later. I'm going to open these guys up. See what we have. I can actually, I know I can safely remove this probe. It's not going to serve me any purpose. So let's see. I hope you guys can see this okay. It's gonna be hot, but let's see. Okay. Whew, that 
that's hot. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm sure the noise is probably a little aggravating, but all right, now you can see the good recess along the bone. That juice I was talking about. Look at this. See this pooling up on here? Underneath it. These bones. I can I could literally twist these out of here if I wanted to. I don't want to, but I mean you can see just it's it's so tender. Now I'm still gonna do you know, I'm still gonna do another sixty you know, I'll probably do another forty minutes. Uh on this low heat. But I mean you, you can <laughs> you can see how how good that they have turned out so I mean this like I could twist this right out. I mean it's so so moist so what I do now position this and I flip it like this see now I've been cooking on its back that whole time and now that's over so now I'm going to let the juices redistribute in there. Do the same thing with this one. And uh, we should be good to go. So uh, the final finished product will give you, or I'll, I'll you know, show you. Uh, again, it's going to be probably another 40 minutes or so. We should be uh, so ready to eat. <laughs> this should be the finished product. Let's see, you can see how, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's about to fall apart. It's like this bone here. I can just, you know, pull it. It's just as smooth as can be. See what I'm saying? So, there's that. I'm just going to throw that down in my firebox so my dogs don't get it. these things on the grill or get these things off the grill I mean so So now I just have to grab these. They're they're hot. That's okay. Still bubbling a little bit. So there you go. And then, like I said, that silver skin or whatever, it's a joke. I mean, I can. There is what silver skin. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Not too bad. Um, I mean, I've made much better ribs. You can slow cook them. Uh, you know, pretty much whatever you want to do. I mean, these technically were done long, long ago. Uh, they just weren't done up to my standards. But yeah, like I said, I mean, just comes out, goes back in. <laughs> so that's that. Uh, again, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, ask. Um, I I'll be more than happy to answer them if I'm able. Um, just let me know. Um, I do some gaming and stuff too, but I don't know. This is Mother's Day and there uh, wasn't a lot going on, so I figured I would uh, just share how to uh, cook a, a mean rib. I mean, you know, if you... Uh, if you want some really good tender ribs, then uh, you should definitely follow follow this one. Uh, but yeah, there are many other ways. And if you need uh, you know any advice on how to prep them or um, eat, whatever, if you want to remove the silver skin, you know there's tips and tricks to do that. Uh, you know you can you you know I'll, I'll do that on larger ribs. But when I cut them down for St. Louis style, um, yeah, it's. For me, it's not nothing to worry about. So, okay, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, thank you for watching. Uh, this is Greg.